Tupac is still alive. But that's not what this video is about. Today, we're talking about direct marketing strategies. And what you're going to learn in this video is, first of all, what the gurus won't tell you. Direct marketing and marketing in general, online or wherever you're going to do it, is really easy. It's a simple formula, and you're going to learn that. By the end of this video, you'll be able to start your own million-dollar kitchen table business. Let's go get it. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, click the thumbs up, hit that bell for notifications because I'm uploading about one a day right now and you never know how much value I'll be delivering and you don't want to miss it. Let's jump right into the video. So what is direct marketing? So there's two types of marketing that we're going to have. The first type of marketing is brand awareness. So you have companies like Coca-Cola, you can see on the slide here, Fila. You've got Beats by Dre, you've got Nike, uh, Land Rover, Toyota, whoever it is. Uh, just on a, as a side note, uh, like you have Mountain Dew, Pepsi, and Coca-Cola, and we'll talk about this in a minute, about how people are really uh, glued into a brand. And these people do brand awareness from when we're kids. So, you know, if you kept seeing Coca-Cola commercials and your mom drank Coke, you pretty much stuck to that. I don't know if you guys remember the Pepsi challenge back in the day. This is the taste. This is the test. Pepsi versus Coke. The Pepsi Challenge. Pepsi. And all across America, more people pick Pepsi. Pepsi. Time Pepsi. after time after time. Pepsi Cola. Oh, what a time. It's gonna be Pepsi now. And the reason why they did that is because people are stuck on Coca-Cola or they're stuck on Pepsi. And they're just trying to get you away from the brand because people are really loyal to like the soda that they'll drink or different brands that they've been using since they've been a kid. And so this type of advertising, there's like, it's just willy nilly what we call in the direct marketing world and direct response marketing world, because there's no real way to find out if your advertising is working because they just spend tons of money on the Super Bowl ads and everything else, getting that brand in your face. Um, to give you an example, Nancy said earlier she's a Mountain Dew girl, and I asked her, what do I drink? She says, well, because we don't drink soda anymore anyways. We only drink water, but she says, well, you drank Coke, but you like the flavored Coke. But it wasn't Pepsi that she said. It wasn't, you know, some other type of soda. I was clearly a Coke guy, and she's a Mountain, Mountain Dew person. And people will stick to those brands. So the job in brand awareness is to keep nurturing you and keep the brand in your face over and over and over again. Just like we, we also talked about uh, the Rice Krispies, Snap, Crackle, Pop. Fun, interesting little thing right now. Gary Bensavanga, which is a direct mail copywriter, his dad actually wrote that Snap, Crackle, Pop in a competition and won that competition uh, for, for Kellogg's. And he's a direct uh, mail giant. But uh, moving on, those all those things we have. And if you ate Rice Krispies when you were a kid, you're going to eat Rice Krispies as you're an adult. And then you're going to give your kids Rice Krispies. And so that's how brand and brand awareness works. That's not what we want to do. So you see, we got Chuck Norris here with the Total Gym. You got Suzanne Summers out there with the Thigh Master. She made millions of dollars with that Thigh Master. Um, you can see, as seen on TV, Nordic Track, Columbia House, um, Ronco, the Ginsu Knives. I don't know if you guys remember that, but the Ginsu Knives were big. There's Ginsu World Class, the finest knife in the world. Finer than a German knife? And so we also have the Slap Chop. Everybody's seen the Slap Chop commercials. We'll run that really quick. Hi, it's Fitz with Slap Chop. You're gonna be in a great mood all day because you're gonna be slapping your troubles away with a Slap Chop. Now look, here's a potato. One slap, you got big chunks for stews. Who slaps? Home fries in a second. And look at this, but you add a mushroom, the more you do it, the finer it gets, you don't have to switch any blades. Agora Financial is a direct marketing beast. The difference between brand awareness and direct marketing is metrics. What you can measure, you have cost per acquisition, cost per leads, the average order value, response rates and conversion rates, all of this is measured. And Gary Halbert said all marketing is is a simple math problem and everybody knows that. And this is the big the big thing that no one none of the gurus will tell you marketing is really easy. It's a simple math problem. Uh it's basically 
knowing you have to be analytic you have to look at analytics and be able to define these ana analytics and interpret what these analytics mean and they're not hard to figure out once you start advertising you start to buy data and this is another problem but what the gurus won't tell you at the end of the day you're only purchasing data so i want you to stop looking at advertising as i'm gonna put my product out there i'm gonna sell my advertising and i'm gonna start uh, i'm gonna uh, show people my advertising and i'm gonna start making money with that what you want to do is say, I need to spend, especially if you've never done it before, if, you, if you're not a media buyer and you've never done it before, you just want to say, I want to buy a bunch of data. And the data that you're going to purchase is this cost per acquisition. How much does it cost me to get someone to buy my product? So if you find out that number, so let's just say you start advertising and you find out that number. It cost me, uh, I had a guy, a client, uh, not too long ago, a coaching client. And he was like, I want to sell this book and I want to sell it for 37 bucks. And I think I can get 37 bucks for it. Dude, the book itself, if you don't do any upsells or anything like that, and we'll talk about that later, so hang in there with me because we're going to talk about how you can make money at the, with this at the end of it. But just hang in there with me. What I did was I told him, if you're going to sell the book for 37 bucks, then it'll probably right now, the way Facebook works and all these other advertising networks, it'll cost you $37 to sell the book. And that's one of the numbers you need to know. So that's an actual cost per acquisition. A cost per lead is how much does it cost to get somebody to get a lead magnet? You know how those things work. How, does it, how much does it cost to actually get somebody that's interested in your product? And then we have to push them over the fence. How much does that cost? $2, $3, $1.50? And then once you sell them something, there's an average order value. We need to know how much that is. And that's adding in upsells because later on you'll find out that we want to push up those numbers so we can see how much money we can spend on advertising. So now I'm pretty sure you can start to see that there's some math going on right now. If you were doing direct mail, we'd have a response rate. Stay tuned this week because I'm going to talk about the average response rates now. And, and actual direct mail still works. Make sure that you click that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, because next week I'm going to be coming with how the direct response market is still working right now. Conversion rates. How many people are actually converting when they see your ads? And knowing all of those metrics will help you to make a decision. The only two that you really need to be concerned about. Now, obviously, it's more nuanced than this, but I'm just get, kind of giving you a flat out uh, way to look at this is how much are they worth and how much can you pay for a customer? So here you can see your customer lifetime value. And you can find that out after about a year. How much money does a customer spend with you over the lifetime? And then you find out how much did it cost for me to get that customer. So the example here, you have customer, customer lifetime value minus your cost acquisition equals your profit. So let's just say you had a lifetime value of 100 bucks and it cost you 20 bucks to get those people to buy something from you whatever it is if it's a five dollar something if it's a ten dollar something whatever it is it costs you twenty dollars your profit is eighty dollars now if you know that you have a hundred dollars that you're going to make from this customer here's what the big boys do i mentioned agora financial earlier here's what they do they'll spend 50 bucks 65 dollars 75 dollars on their new customers and the reason why they'll spend this kind of money is because they understand that the person that spends the most money the company that can spend the most money getting customers through the door will be the winner so to give an example if we have two lifetime values your customer has a lifetime value of 100 bucks my customer has a lifetime value of 100 bucks and we both have the same product and i'm out there trying to advertise to get customers and you spend twenty dollars. If I spend fifty, I get more customers than you. They will pay attention. Why? Because I'm putting out more ads. They can see more of my. They see more of my brand. They see more of what I have to offer. I'm spending a lot more money so they can see my product before they see your product, and I win. That's the game you want to play early on in your kitchen table business, in your direct marketing business. What you want to do is kind of work your way up this ladder. So in the beginning, you're not going to be able to say. I'll spend $100 to get a client in because I know that I want to work back on the back end. Here's what we're going to talk about next. Here's how you do your customer value optimization. How can we push that number a little bit higher? And how we do that is by upsells, 
cross sales, affiliate offers, and continuity programs. All of these things, what all the gurus are telling you right now, we got a bunch of funnel gurus out there right now. They're telling you that all of that first funnel that you have is your back end, but that's not correct. There's two funnels, and the first one you're going to have is that first funnel that you hear about all the gurus talking about right now. Russell Brunson is out there. He's one of the big, big funnel guys. He's so excited about funnels. <laughs> so what you want to do is that first funnel is your average cart value. And then you know you're spending $67. You're at, they're spending $67 in the cart. So now you know that's your customer acquisition cost right there. But after that funnel, what are you going to sell them then? See, amateurs only look at the front end, and that's what – now, to, to his credit, Russell Brunson does talk about the back end, but it's confusing, so he doesn't talk about it a lot. But I want to see if you can get this right now. So that first funnel, the upsells, down sales, and all that stuff right there, that first funnel, that is your front end funnel. That is – your customer acquisition. So you want to get your cart value up, and that's why you use up sales and cross sales and down sales in that first funnel. So let's just say the average cart value you have is $87 in your first funnel. That right there is $87 is what you make every time somebody comes in. How much are you spending on that? So let's just say you, sp you should be willing to spend $87 on that. And I know you're saying right now, well, Sonny, I'm not making any money. You're not looking to make money right there on the front end. So if you can get an average cart value of $87, spend $87 in advertising, getting them in. And why is that? Because after you have them in, the hardest part of marketing is already done. The hardest part of marketing is not copywriting. It's not any of that. The hardest part of marketing is getting someone to open their wallet and vote, yes, we want what you have today. That is the hardest part. Once they say yes the first time, they'll continue to say yes again if you offer them something that you know that they want. Cross sales, affiliate offers, a continuity program is a monthly program. Now we sell them more stuff. So this is why you'll see people will sell small stuff on the front end. They might sell a $7 offer, and this is what Agora does, a billion-dollar company. They will sell you something for $29. They'll sell you something for $27 or $17, bucks. something really easy for you to grab that covers their cost for advertising. But then they're going to send you an email and more stuff that costs $3,000. They're going to they're gonna break even first, and actually, in their company, they say, we want to be past the break-even mark by six months in. After we break even, now we know we're going to make a ton of money, and they know that their average customer uh, lifetime customer value is going to be somewhere around 1500 bucks or two grand or whatever it is, so now they're trying to sell the customer that. So once you have them in and you want to spend all the money you possibly can, now... All the stuff that everybody's telling you to look for online, everybody's telling you to look at your average customer value, I mean, look at your c conversion rates and your CROs and ROOs and this and that. None of that stuff matters. Just advertise. Keep a close look at the number, but if it's costing you 50 bucks to get customers in and, they, and maybe what you're selling costs 50 bucks, you're spinning your wheels, and that's cool. That's what you want to do. If you could, let's just say this, if you could spend $50 on a customer today, and then I give you another customer and another customer and another customer, and you never have to give me any money, but you have these people on your email list now, how much is that worth? And how many customers would you get? You'd get a billion at that point. So the break-even funnel, that is the front end. The back end is where you really want to work. And that is what all successful direct marketing businesses do. Because now it's free to advertise to you. And that's what you need to understand. That's what the gurus won't tell you. And I've just given it and laid it out all to you right now. I think that deserves a thumbs up. <laughs> Hit that subscribe button, man. And make sure that you get notifications when I'm going to upload. Like I said, I'm going to upload more videos like this on a daily basis. Or a basis. I have a friend that says basis, right? So on a daily basis, man. Remember, with this direct marketing thing, copywriting and everything else, you're going to have to do it every day. Coffee break. Ha, ha, ha.